This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the Grow Omaha Show. Jeff Beals here at your service, broadcasting live from the KFAB studio here in beautiful downtown Dundee. Show's brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing. And without any further ado, it is time to introduce my co host, a man who is legendary in his real estate deal making prowess, Trenton Magid. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Jeff. Well, has it been a good week for you, Trenton? It's been a busy week in commercial real estate and NAI, NP Dodge, and uh, we have no complaints. That's good. Busy is good. And speaking of busy, there's quite a bit on the news agenda today. So we're going to go straight into the news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. In person, 114th and Davenport Street. They can help you with any type of mortgage, whether it's conventional FHA or VA. And a lot of people are buying houses out there. It is July, prime home buying season. And if you're thinking about joining that parade of home buyers, make sure you talk to the good people at Eagle Mortgage. They have mortgage brokers there that will sit down with you, talk with you, figure out your situation, try to match you with the best mortgage option possible. And they're really good at coaching people through the whole process. EagleMortgageCompany.com. All right. Well, Trenton and I had a unique opportunity yesterday to tour Elevator, which is Omaha's new co-warehousing facility. And when I say new, I mean new. It doesn't open until October 1st. And it's a new concept. Yeah, it is. And so we, when we walked through there, it's still under construction and all that. But Trenton, tell everyone what we saw yesterday in Elevator. Well, what's, what's, in, what's interesting, um, Elevator is at 1401 Jones Street. It's the former O'Keefe Elevator building, which is spectacular. In about 2001, uh, Skip O'Keefe and, and his company totally remodeled, poured a lot of money into things, got this striking staircase and Huge ceilings, and it's about 54,000 feet on on um, four different levels. And basically, what it is is it's whether you need 85 square feet or you need a thousand square feet or maybe 1,300 square feet. They have uh, basically co-working space, but you can have your own office, your own little warehouse. Plus, you have common uh, dock high facilities, garage door, break rooms, training room, all these different uh, services. So if, if you're a mom and pop shop or you're growing your business, you're coming out of your house or a smaller space, and you want to have someone in there all the time that can take your packages, store your inventory, and, and really incubate and grow your business, you know, your goal is to grow out of it, but you have plenty of time to do it. You can do month-to-month leases as opposed to what we usually do, which is long-term leases. And um, I encourage anybody to, to, to look at it. It's... It's under construction right now. Jeff, they told us that they would be open October 1st. October 1st. And it's uh, the, the new library is going to be across the street. So it's 14th and Jones. Um, can't miss it. And uh, I encourage everybody to check it out. It's something that's unique. You know, we've heard of co working sp- space, we work, and those kind of businesses. But this is more uh, entrepreneurial focused where you you have an inventory with with your business. Yeah, yeah, for all these e-commerce companies, you know, if you're starting some small e-commerce company and you've been working out of your basement or your spare bedroom, um, it's designed for that guy, um, that person who's uh, tired of doing that and wants to kind of bring his or her business up to the next level. Cool stuff. And we need more of that in Omaha, that, that, that type of infrastructure, I hate to call it infrastructure because it's a private investment, but that type of infrastructure that makes it possible for people to take risks and grow businesses. And, you know, you talked about uh, co-working, which refers to co-office space or community office space. There's a ton of that downtown. But I've talked to a couple of people lately who have said that a couple of the co-working spaces have been hard to find downtown. A couple really? of them, Yeah. They've said, oh, I looked at this one and they're full or what have you. And I don't know if that's the case now. It was a couple months ago when I heard that. But obviously, it's popular and, and people really seem to what enjoy it. What we need is, is more companies to get back to the office. Gosh, I know it. You know, it's uh, 
I, I totally get it because if you are working in a situation, you know, I, I, I've I've come to this theory: who who likes the the work from home and who likes to go to the office? If you have a private office at uh, your place of employment, I think you want to go back to the office. If you're one of those uh, people that works like at a bench with 16 other millennials whose shoulders <laughs> are touching you, you're not so fast to go back to the office. I think Umbaya. that's the, the demarcation line. Well, absolutely, absolutely, and, and it stands to reason that that middle management and upper management, um, if, if they're calling their own shots, they can go to their own doctor's appointments without a, a slip to, to leave and without having to clock out and things like that. They want to go back. They want to separate uh, work from home. But but when it when it's the, the rank and file and they're in cubes or open office plan and stuff, and they've been able to let their dog out for the last two years and, and play around at home while they're getting their work done, so to speak, that's great, too. And I'm not knocking anybody that works from home. I'm just saying... I think there's a lot of synergies and a lot of culture that is gained by people together. And we'll have someone that we can uh, talk to about that after the break. Collaboration and group creativity are very, very important in, in business. And I think a lot of companies are missing that right now. Hey, let's talk about a huge project that was announced this week. The Omaha Performing Arts Society. Uh, has announced plans for the Center for Arts Engagement. This is going to be attached to the east side of the Holland Performing Arts Center. It is a $103 million addition. If I remember correctly, the entire Holland Center was right about $100 million. Absolutely. Yeah, it, was just, it was just over $100 million. And, and Steelhouse Omaha is 100. 95% public... Uh, privately funded. I'm sure this one is mostly privately funded as well. And Steelhouse Omaha, I think, is right at 103. Yeah. So they have a thing well, at uh, OPAS for building 103 million, million dollar projects. Too, right, about 100 million dollars. Yeah, yeah, right in that area. So, uh, so we we kind of add 100 million dollar projects. 100, 100 million dollars was was really something. We had $100 million projects to downtown quite frequently, right? it, it seems like. So this is really cool. I'm looking at an artist rendering. And for those of you who can picture the Holland Center in your mind, there is a large grassy area to the east. Um, that grassy area is also directly south to Steelhouse Omaha, which is under construction and due to open uh, middle of next year. At any rate, it looks to me to be about a three-story addition, a lot of glass, uh, very tasteful looking. It rises above the Holland Center. Yeah, it'll be uh, about a uh, half a story taller than the east side of the Holland Center. Not as tall as the the part where uh, it juts up uh, where the performance venue is for the symphony and all that. But um, looks great, and uh, this is going to be in many ways for education and, and furthering the arts and, and, a, and a lot of outreach. Fundraising is underway. Do you remember what event they were going to host there before they moved it? Yes, the Major League Baseball Draft. In the Holland Center? Yeah. Yeah, I know that, but I kind of remember that, actually. Uh, no, on the green space, what what event that's very popular they're going to host there that was way too small? Jazz on the green. Right. And they moved to Turner Park. Exactly. Yeah. Good move. Yeah. You're, you're trying to play Stump the Beals, and yeah. so far you're not off to a very good start this morning. I'll work on it. Okay, the next news. The Henry Dorley Zoo is expecting more baby elephants. The the. I'll tell you what, the, the, the elephants there are behaving like rabbits. <laughs> yes, they are. And it's a good thing they are because, you know, they are um, somewhat uh, difficult to... Uh Okay, I don't want to dig myself into a hole there, but uh, we need more. We need more elephants in the United States. You sure got a nice trunk. They don't breed as frequently as uh, people would like them to in order to perpetuate the species here in the U.S. In fact, the two baby elephants born at Henry Dorley Zoo this year, or from what we understand, the only two elephants born in the entire United States. And now there are six slated to be born because they have a long gestation period next year. Two of those will be here. So if all goes well, by the time we get to the fall of 2023, the Omaha herd will grow to 10 elephants, four of which will be cute little boogers. Yeah, I've been down there and, and they're amazing to watch. And, and, uh, it's it's something to see, and that between that and the sea lions, there's there's definitely reason to go there, no matter matter how many times you've been down there. And uh, there must be some kind of aphrodisiac being sprayed into the hay or something like that. Hey, whatever it takes, because uh, it, it seems to be working. And um, and I think the uh, the people who are in that whole animal genetic zoo world are pretty thrilled about this. They're going to start bottling that and selling it to humans. 
those who need it, I guess. And then we go for one final thing to the University of Nebraska Medical Center area. If you've been by there in the last couple of days, you may have noticed a large red tower crane. We say the tower crane is the official bird of the city of Omaha, and uh, we love them. And this tower crane is for a six-story Hampton Inn Hotel under construction on the southwest corner of 44th and Douglas Street. Also in the Med Center area, it looks like virtually all of the old Monroe Meyer and J.P. Lord School have been demolished. Wow. Still taking debris out of the area, but of course that makes way for Project Next, which uh, we know is going to happen, but it's still not finalized, formal, uh, all the all the, the are they T's still crossed waiting? yet. Is, 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 are we waiting for federal funding? Have they appropriated the money? They just haven't funded it yet. There's or? just some. There's a couple more levels of federal approval that have to go through, and of course, when you're dealing with the federal government, things tend to take a long time. But also this year, we should start to see construction on the administrative building on the southwest corner of Saddle Creek and Farnham. In fact, I've noticed last time I was in the area, there are some barricades there, and people are no longer using that surface parking uh, lot. So that would lead one to believe that construction will probably start soon on that project. And that'll have a grassy knoll over and above Saddle Creek. I'd call it a glassy, uh, a grassy lid. Grassy lid? A grassy okay. lid, yeah. It's going to be... They crop, call, well, let's call it a crop top. A crop top. They call them lids when you put a large structure over a road or a highway and actually plant landscaping and grass on it and all that sort of thing. So there will be a lid over Saddle Creek. It could just be a saddle. And with that, uh, we conclude your development news of the week by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. Going to take our first break of the hour. And when we come back, we're going to bring on Paul Moss. He is the CEO of Schooler, a company here in Omaha, which is doing great things around the world and recently moved into a brand new headquarters building in West Omaha. Got a lot of things to talk about with Paul, so make sure you stay tuned for that. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing on News Radio 1110 KFAB. All right. We're off and running. <laughs> Oh, have you done much radio? Um, not a lot. So, like, I actually, I did a iHeart deal. Uh, might be a staple there, so be careful. Oh, no worries. Hey, Jeff. Um, Could you move so, the arm just a little bit? This, it's hard because it always wants to bounce back up. Mostly the upper elbow. Is that? Oh, so, Tucker, you better be listening. <laughs> yeah, it's awfully hard. Oh, is that better? Okay. Yeah. As long as maybe you... Yeah, I don't know if you want to be able to uh, work from home and all that, but I'd be... That'd yeah, be, yeah I'd you got your people back? We, we are, but we um, uh, we went with a hybrid mm-hmm. model. So you like it? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, work from home. All right. And by the way, this is being recorded. So, oh, okay. So, uh, no jokes about Jeff. <laughs> it's not anymore than he's used to. <clears throat> I'm used to it, yeah. Hey, where's the cheesecake? <laughs> he's making his own cheesecakes, his own pizzas. He's fridge. a full service. He does our website and everything. If you guys need, it's, it's unbelievable. Of what, what is Arbor okay. Arbor Creative? Yeah, Arbor Creative. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, check out our website. It's pretty cool. Do you, do you get on there at all? Yeah. I, I, well, I didn't just because of this. Get yeah. ready. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your uh, marketing person sent us a few topics, so yeah, we'll throw those out there, but we'll also maybe just bounce around. 100, how many years old is the company? 130. Wow. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's uh, 100, yeah, it is. What's, uh, what number CAEO are you? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, all right, good. I'm glad we're not asking anyone. There'll only be about 10 people that are going to see it on the, we call this the uncut. For so those that are daring. Well, 130 years, I mean, like, yeah. that's, that's tough to go yeah. back. And, and I, I should know that, but I really, uh, is Schooler, was, somebody named Schooler signed it? Yeah, George Schooler in Superior, Nebraska is where it started. Oh, really? You know, Tucker got married in your building. You know? or, oh, the, the, the reception. Room, the reception. Yeah, he's so. telling Chris that here. The, the, um, the, the real thing about Schooler, though, for us, yeah, so it was the first 75 no, he years. Got, yeah, he got married. He in, got in married the, there. In the ballroom. Yeah. At, at, the, uh, at our old headquarters building. Yeah. yeah. But um, Marshall Faith bought Schooler okay, I remember that in 1967, 55 years ago this month. Huh. And that's really, it was three grain elevators. For the first 75 years, it only grew to three different elevators. So it was, uh, and it was a struggling company when he bought it. Mm-hmm. So that's really where I feel what like year was our story What did he buy it? 
1967. Okay. Yeah. And you know, Marshall's longtime Omaha. He's, he's here in Omaha today. And he's still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 93, healthy. I get an opportunity to meet with him probably once a month. Yeah, he's just fantastic. Uh, once a month is a lot? Yeah, it is. Yeah, he and uh, Zoom meetings, he has his tech technology set very just a fantastic fantastic you probably watch, you probably watch his uncut he's like i am a <laughs> yeah, but I watch his Sorry, <laughs> i have i have the faith his, his son david is our chairman <clears throat> oh wow yeah, okay yeah and so yeah so what are you then uh ceo, oh, CEO. So i'm a chairman of the board and you got be president too and welcome back to the show, Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggage at your service. Grow Omaha is brought to you by D&M Roofing, Omaha's premier commercial and residential roofing contractor. We love them. They do such a great job for their clients taking care of people. We've used them ourselves, both residentially and uh, through some of the uh, commercial real estate work that we've done. And we could not recommend D&M Roofing any higher. And then also Dingman's Collision Center for metro area locations. All right. We periodically like to bring on CEOs of Omaha-based companies to uh, find out what those companies are up to and help you understand more about some of these companies in town that are doing great things around the world. And one of those is Schooler. And with us today is CEO Paul Moss. Good morning, Paul. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, good to have you on the show. And uh, I guess uh, we always like to start with a 30,000-foot view. Tell us a little bit about Schooler. Yeah, so uh, Schooler is an incredible company. We were founded 130 years ago, 1892, started in Superior, Nebraska. Uh, we like to share the story that the real Schooler began in 1967 when Marshall Faith bought the company, and that's where our growth has really taken off. And so uh, we're a much bigger company today, headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska, about uh, 1,400 employees globally. and. Uh, you know, sales is, is kind of a number that we, we look at a lot of times. We're around $9 billion in sales, so we've, we've grown tremendously since 1967. Wow. Is it private or public? Uh, Schooler's a privately held company, uh, employee-owned, and uh, we really love that about, uh, about the company. It's, it's something that we feel makes us a bit special. And so you, how, how many locations? We have over 100 facilities globally. Uh, our strongest presence and historical presence is North America. So. U.S., Canada, and Mexico, uh, but we do have uh, a, a larger and growing presence in Asia, based out of Singapore, but then facilities in Indonesia, Myanmar, and, and a small trade office in uh, in Shanghai. You know, if you got an extra seat, I've been dying to go to Singapore. <laughs> oh, you got to come. It's, a, it's an incredible place. How many times have you been to Singapore? I've only been to Singapore twice. Okay, I'm, I'm dying... I'm dying to get there. If you have it, I'd highly recommend it. It's a, it's a very modern, incredible We could do a remote from there, Jeff. Sure we could. Yeah. Uh, the time zone thing would so, be tough. So the products, you know, a lot of Omaha's known as Schooler Grain Company, and, and you need to go by Schooler now. What is, what are the, the products? Yeah, so, and that's our history as a grain company. So we uh, purchase and originate a lot of grain uh, from farmers. So you, you buy from farmers, you don't have farms. Correct. Uh, so we, we buy from farms, you know, store their grain, transport or get it to uh, the demand source. And if you think about grain, it's harvested once a year. So it's got to be stored. And then that, that harvest is, uh, you know, the demand, you're filling, fulfilling that demand over the course of the, of the next season, basically. And so do you, we do, do process anything? We do process, you know, and that's a growing part of our company. Uh, we've been uh, traditionally, before I joined the company, we kind of, didn't really view that as a capability. And so that's a new capability we have. Um, probably a big highlight is we built a Greenfield pet food ingredient facility in Seward, Nebraska called Pet Source, but that's freeze dried pet food ingredients. Uh, it was over a $50 million investment. And since then, we've announced we're going to triple its size with a $75 million investment. And that, that project's Nebraska. underway. Yeah, in Seward, Nebraska. Yeah, which is fantastic. It's an on trend product. So if you have pets, uh, Try some freeze-dried ingredients, and, and your your pets will appreciate and love you for it. Well, Paul, before the show, I was going back through some of our old Gromha market reports just to look at all the schooler news that we've reported on over the last year. And I mean, there every few weeks it seems like there's a new facility uh, that you guys open up somewhere in the world. There was one recently in Asia for uh, fish. Yeah, fish meal. Food, fish yes. meal, yeah. yes. Which is a really love that stuff. <laughs> it's a very uh, nutritious and important ingredient, especially for aquaculture. Uh, but it's also utilized in uh, in the pet food industry as well. And yeah, I would just comment on our growth. I mean, we um, 
we're on a very dynamic growth plan. We believe it's a lot. I mean, one, it's important for our shareholders to, you know, that's what I'm here for, is to creating uh, value and, and uh, um, for our shareholders. And you're going to do that more effectively if you're growing. Uh, we have so much opportunity as a company, and so we've really leaned in that way. And so kind of, if you're watching the news, there, there are a lot of different um, growth initiatives that we have announced in our core businesses, but also um, in innovative new products in different spaces to, to, to really expand and grow the company, which has been exciting for, uh, for myself, but really exciting for our teams. So, Paul, let's talk a little bit about that new headquarters building. Uh, Schooler had been located downtown, just south of Central High School, for quite some time. Really cool looking building, but uh, recently uh, took a uh, building near 136th and uh, California, completely renovated it. Looks really nice from the outside. Give us a little background on that move. Yep yeah, the the reality is we outgrew it, and uh, you know we loved our location. And a lot of people in Omaha might know Schooler from. You know, attending a wedding, like you said, Tucker's uh, wedding reception was there. My uh, brother. Um, but um, we, we outgrew us. We love the space. We would have, uh, if we could have found the right solution for us on the right timeline in downtown, we would have stayed there. Uh, but bottom line, we needed, uh, we needed more space and also better functionality. So it was really important for us as, a cult- as we evolve our culture in the company to have uh, a more open, collaborative environment. And that facility was, you know, we were on five floors, really cut up today. All of our employees are on two floors in a much more open format. So it's, it really hit the mark on, fun, mark on fun, functionality. Uh, but we also needed more spaces. We've grown. We've, we've really doubled the amount of employees since I've joined here in Omaha. How long has that been? Uh, six, just, it'll be six years next month. So time flies when we're you're glad having to fun. have you and Julie here. Yeah, I, I love it. So um, during the first segment, Trent and I were talking a little bit about work from home and, and being in the office. How is Schooler handling that transition with the new building post COVID? I guess if you can say post COVID. Yeah, and we look at it post COVID. But I, you know, one during the pandemic, the shift to work from home, we we were really uh, impressed with how well we were able to execute our business. Uh, through that, because we shipped, we, everybody shifted to work from home. Um, as we've come through that, and with our new headquarters, we've brought everybody back, uh, but in a hybrid. And so today, it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, expected to be in. Thursday and Friday uh, are flex and hybrid. If you want to work from home and your Java enables that, that you can do it. And it really, when we first came back uh, Friday, we had Friday flex, and that really wasn't enough. We had a lot of feedback from employees. And so we went to Thursday, and it really hit the mark for us. And I think most companies are going to have to figure out you know, what works for them, but that is, that's where we landed in it, and it has really worked out well. Well, it seems to me that the tough thing, and we kind of alluded to this a little bit in the earlier segment, um, the, the tough thing is there are so many benefits that come from collaboration when employees see each other face-to-face and the creativity that is generated when you're there face-to-face. And so it seems like it's an awfully difficult challenge for a lot of leaders to get people to be there for that collaboration, but yet uh, uh, take care of this desire that people have to uh, have that time on, on their own and, and remote that they're now used to. Yeah, and I'll comment. Uh, Schooler has five pillars of our strategy, and uh, of the five, two are really about our organization. One is to evolve our culture, a commitment to do that, and that enables things then like the investment in the new headquarters. Um, the other is around increasing our collaboration, and we feel that that'll really unlock value for our shareholders. And so we're, we're committed as a company to, to evolve our culture, and to do that, you've got to spend time together. You've got to have those relationships, and and so that's why we feel it's important. We are very intentional about making Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the office, so everybody's there, and that that collaboration and engagement and the relationship building is happening, and at the same time, embracing you know employees' expectations changed after their experience of being at home for an extended period of time with COVID, and we had to we felt like it was really important to embrace that reality as well, and so. Um, who knows? You know, right now, that's working for us, and uh, it kind of seems to kind of be the sweet spot for Schooler anyway. So you've been in, in Omaha for six years. Per, uh, per, I, I would, uh, Julie and I have lived in Omaha for 32 of the last 34 years. Okay, okay. And then uh, uh, when, when I joined Schooler six years ago, uh, I had already been in Omaha, so it was really a, okay. a nice fit for us to, to be able to have this opportunity right so, now. So, I mean, you could live anywhere you want to, and, and, and you like, like us, you— you choose to live here, and, and so 
What are some of the things that you see make Omaha unique? Yeah, you know, and we, we love Omaha. Our children were born and raised here. This is home. Uh, one of the things when I attract talent to Omaha, we talk about Omaha being a great city, a simple city. You can get around. You know, there's not the traffic problems that you may have. And yet there's unbelievable opportunities. And there, there's so much investment that's happening. If you look at downtown, uh, I mean, there's countless examples that you that you highlight all the time. Um, and so Omaha is just a, I mean, it's the, the people are fantastic. Uh, schoolers are, uh, schools are fantastic. And um, we just, we love that the values and the, 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 the vibe and the feel that you have here in Omaha. And that's why, you know, as we were making a headquarter change, we'd ever for once thought about what would we relocate schoolers headquarter outside of Omaha. Uh, this is home. We're committed to it. And we're really invested in doing everything we can to, to grow Omaha and, and, and help it be successful. So out of the 1,400 employees, how many are in Omaha? We're at a hun- just under 160. Okay. So we're very decentralized. I, yeah, that comes with being a global company. Um, but like I said, we, it's about double from when I started uh, right. six years ago. And we the space that we have is very expandable. So we... Yeah, I would I would anticipate that if you said, hey, over the next six years, what's going to happen? We'll probably double again. Awesome. Uh, it's, okay, we're going to take our middle of the show break for the news. And when we come back, we're going to have more with Paul Mace from Schooler. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Right when I started talking, I was about ready to talk. Tucker just sent me a text that I was mispronouncing your name. Oh, I can't. Yeah, so I, I should. It's oh, all right. Okay. I should have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just got this <laughs> pronounced oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I should have told you that up at the, at the very beginning. Uh, okay. My apologies for that. I, I get it all the time. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. all the time. So it does. In fact, my brother, he changed it. Oh, Tomas. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because he was like. He was just tired of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We know a guy, a pretty annoying guy, an attorney from, from Los Angeles. And his name, him and his brother were. Appel, A P E L, or no Apple? They they pronounce it Apple. And then his second wife said, "I don't want to be called Apple," so he starts calling himself Appel. No way. And his son's a, his brother's Apple. And he's Appel. Yeah. And, and the sad thing, my that brother, he passed away. So like at the funeral, him is well, okay, his wife or widow. His, yeah. His two children. You know, and even I'm like in I gave eulogy. Right. And I. Yeah, you know, maybe I introduce myself to Paul Mason. They're like, you're saying your name wrong. <laughs> it's like people that do not. They're brothers, right? <laughs> it, was a, it was kind of a, a unique experience. <laughs> Some businesses yeah. can make a company yeah, that's, uh, to redeem credit that's cards. Yeah, that's too bad. And then people get the hyphenated names. Like, a lot of them don't even like it, but they just drop it in there. So, um, you guys are probably sneaking up on the Fortune 1000. Yeah, so like uh, our last year, I can't remember where we were on the list. You know, they, Forbes does the uh, largest private company. Yeah. And we were, God, if I remember right, in the 60s. And we, 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 we were about $4.5 billion. We're over $9 billion today, like when I joined. So that's Rated 60? Last year, so as far as largest private company, private, private company we'll be, we'll, we'll be, in, I'll bet it'll go to in that top 30. Or so. I, I, I'll, I can follow up. Once, once I, that comes out once a year, when it does, I can share with okay. Because private companies are in the Fortune 1000. Yeah. But, the, but Forbes will come out with its own list. So like, uh-huh. uh, like, Cargill, I think, is number one. Coke, yeah, yeah. like uh, uh, industries. You know, yeah, Coke, yeah, Coke Industries, yeah. Big Mars, M and M Mars, those are three. And they're like they're. What do we want to talk about in the next segment? Well, I do want to talk a little bit about talent recruitment, and um, and then you know, your marketing person said uh, supply chain issues. Yeah, do you, if you want to get into agriculture, yeah. maybe 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 not. Do we want to do we want to talk about the Ukraine issue and? Is it something that's up to you? Easy to, it it's it's easy for me to just talk concise? about how, how that. Um, the, the, the unique thing about it is, you know, in our lifetime we've never had. It. There's been plenty of wars, but none in the I'll call it the bread basket. Do you do anything in Russia, Russia or Ukraine? We don't. But very very limited. So it was, it was um, from a direct impact to our company, very very minimal. How is it hurting um, the world food market though? Significant. That's the big deal. It's, it is a very very different thing. Like, Iraq, then mm-hmm. impact food Iraq. Uh, if you go back to Vietnam or I feel like Afghanistan, mm-hmm. Are we, wars just don't impact food. Can production. we be grain independent? Can the U- the U.S. produces way more grain okay. than we utilize here, okay. but the world relies on it, mm-hmm. right? right? So 
Um, and then that that Ukraine disruption, the, Ukraine and Russia uh, represent 26% of global wheat exports. Right. Okay. Africa, I mean, you did you just completely so wheat is that. different than grain no it is it's okay. just a grain okay. corn wheat soybeans would be yeah that's all you learn all about agriculture here today yeah. you? <laughs> but yeah i mean i could offer i mean whatever you think is uh, the talent is probably relevant mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. if, if you want to get into that but i'm, I'm we could take it wherever you guys want to go okay yeah let's touch on the talent uh and then ukraine supply chain kind of i'm debating on whether i should talk about the bedroom set that uh, we have on the market now we ship. We this could be Tucker's, more relevant. Tucker's we, trying to get the bedroom set out of his house. The, the, like you think of consumers and their frustration with not being able to get stuff right. and all that. So we ship a lot. School. We ship. A, we're, we're the tenth largest shipper of containers in the U.S. Second largest really? in wow. A. So we huh. ship a lot of containers. Do you have? Do you use other people? Like, who owns the containers? Uh, the big shipping companies. And, and so, what do you them? think about? We're, we have all this cons consumer consumption in the U.S manufactured in Asia comes in, we load agriculture products to go back so out no. and to go to, the, yeah. to okay. the demand source in yeah. Asia. And that's part of the, the buildup of Singapore is to connect those supply chains. So we're bringing soy, I mean, we're bringing egg products, agriculture products, um, you know, from the U.S., from North America back to, yeah. uh, to Asia. Does that make sense? So we're giving this refrigerated? Uh, not really. I mean, very, very, very limited in our MDOCC, but yeah. So my biggest project, with it, your biggest project, where were you before? Uh, Conagra. Mm -hmm. I was there 27 years. Oh, wow. So I had, like, I ran the Lamb Weston business. That's all frozen potatoes. So, and that is mainly produced here. We would ship those globally. So you, that'd all be frozen, can, uh, so refrigerated containers. But really, yeah. <coughs> so they exist. They're a little bit more specialized than us. It's just the big Now there's a group that's separating from Gavilan. Did you see that? Are there some guys that are breaking off? Yeah. Well, that, and that, you know, they uh, um, sold. So there's an announcement that, that Gavilan sold to uh, Glencore, so mm -hmm. and by Terra. And so that is, uh, that's all underway. That's, I'm going to estimate that that'll close here relatively soon. Did you know, uh, are you buddies with, with Jerry Artelio? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, he, so that, and that's where I started. I, I was trading commodities. Oh, where? Uh, I came to like, Omaha to, to work for Canadian trading commodities. Oh, that. In nineteen ten. Yeah. And so I did that for sixteen years, and then I went on and ran other businesses. And so the the when we divested Gavilon in two thousand eight, that's where I split because I had been with a lot of those folks, but I was running the grain processing businesses phone? and all that. So. No. I hear like a jingle. That's on the radio. It was a commercial. Liberty. Liberty. Yeah. It's amazing that budgets and some of these companies that balance nature. Plenty. Preferences. But, uh, but yeah, yes, yeah, so I know Jerry real well. Do you believe Tucker's getting rid of the house? That's what we were talking about. That. End of an era. Yeah. Well, I think Cindy Lee's down and Tucker sells the house. It's like, Tucker, buddy, you're in trouble. Yeah. Careful, you go. Careful where 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 you go. The, uh, have they figured out what they're going to do yet? Uh, like in Omaha? Yeah. All right, here we go, gentlemen. I don't know time and tell you right. I don't know. No matter how hot things get, today's news radio. It's going to be done. <laughs> And welcome back to the show, Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. This is Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and Dingman's Collision Center. Everyone knows Dingman's for body repair, but they also do mechanical work as well. And Dingman's has four Omaha area locations. At Dingman's, they would rather be the best than apologize for anything less. And they live out that statement and that slogan every single day. Well, it's time for our commercial real estate development spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. Noddlecompanies.com is where you find them online. You can find their properties all over Omaha and the United States. They're based here, uh, but they do their projects uh, in all sorts of markets. And some of the big projects that Noddle Companies has here in Omaha or have here in Omaha would include River's Edge, the Builders District, Steel Ridge, Village Point Medical Center campus, and of course, Exarban Village. One little thing about Exarban Village you'll find interesting this week 
Um, the shops of Exarbon, which are just kind of to the northwest of Exarbon Village, have a new tenant going in there. Hokkaido Ramen House plans to open in the former Okra African Grill space. The actual address is 1303 South 72nd Street. Now, Okra is still around. They just moved a little bit to the north uh, to a space closer to Nebraska Furniture Mart. But this Hokkaido is a chain of authentic Asian ramen houses. They have existing locations in Montana, Idaho, Indiana, Illinois, Texas. Don't know an exact opening date, but that's coming to the shops at Exarbon Village. But, you know, uh, Trenton uh, J. Noddle is a good friend of ours and the CEO of Noddle Companies. And he is president of the Omaha Streetcar Authority. And I tell you, the, the streetcar thing is gaining so much momentum right now, past a huge hurdle, a very important hurdle in the city council. A couple weeks ago. We're going to be seeing that thing going forward, and the development we're going to see on the Farnham Street corridor is going to be off the charts. Yeah, kudos to Jay Noddle and, and his team and all the other uh, volunteers for this, the streetcar um, committee, as, as well as, you know, he's been, I think, four or five years, he's been on the, ur- maybe longer, the Urban Core uh, Committee, the head of that, and that takes a lot of time, and, and he is so involved in Omaha economic development and um, making things happen. So we we appreciate that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your commercial real estate development spotlight brought to you by Noddle Companies. Well, we have Paul Mace with us. He is the CEO of Schooler, Omaha-based company that's growing rapidly with uh, operations around the globe. And Paul, one of the things uh, we wanted to make sure we talk about a little bit is uh, talent recruitment. Uh, we are in this era that is going to last for the foreseeable future in which there are just not enough human beings anymore. Um, what is Schooler doing both locally for leadership positions here in Omaha for headquarters and then around the world for all of the functions you need to just find the right people? Yeah, it's, it is a big challenge. And, uh, you know, holistically, there's two job openings for every unemployed person in the U.S. So, you know, the backdrop is uh, a very, very tight labor market. Uh, we feel like you know we've been fortunate to be able to attract talent to Schooler to be able to execute our business and keep them. Yeah, and yeah, and it, you know um, the the reason is we're committed to a, a set of values, yeah, and so there's there's really uh, deep clarity across our employee base of what's expected and what it's like, what they should expect from leadership and from the company, about what we should expect from one another as we work there. So uh, committed to a culture that is. Um, um, attractive to to a lot of folks, and um, and then just kind of I would describe it as running the business the right way, doing the right things, a, a culture of safety in our facilities, um, and investing in that. Uh, we do we we are very intentional about developing leaders and investing back in the organization for growth to facilitate that, and um, and that pays off. And so even though the backdrop, and, and when I talk to other leaders, and I spend a lot of time, especially as we navigated COVID. Um, engaging with other CEOs to really understand, you know, how, how can I navigate this time successfully? The number one topic over this past year has been talent, has been the, the labor challenge. And so it's it's front and center. Uh, I feel fortunate that we're, we're navigating it very effectively. And, and I think that employers have to, have to have to do it right and play their part, but so do employees. And, and my concern is that in general, there's some, there, there's some people that Take advantage of took advantage of COVID or took advantage of the, their employers, and it you know it, it's so important to, to, to set the ground rules. And I can't imagine what it costs to to lose a good employee. You know, it's it's a given that both employees and employers have to be good, have good character and, and strong work ethic. But employers need to realize the cost of losing someone that has a, a track record, someone that has embedded in the company, and then to retraining. The next people and and I've seen that where there's a transient workforce and and um, it's kind of scary. Yeah, it, and it really is disruptive. You know, so we we put a lot of effort into doing the right things to retain talent. Uh, we have a pay for performance culture, and that can that can really go a long way uh, where where people are rewarded for their performance. If Imagine back, that. If you go back to our founder Marshall Faith, he believed in sharing the success of the company with those that create it. And so that's that's a unique part about our culture. And so today, the reason we're employee owned is because of that that 
that decision, you know, that like share the success with the co- of the company with those. And so as we've grown, um, our, our retention rates compared to industry benchmarks are you know, very favorable. And I think it, it probably speaks to that. And it pays off. To do it. It, re- it really does. It, and it, as you said, it is, it's costly uh, when you lose talent it, to retrain them. And, that, you know, the time and the effort that that takes and the disruption that it creates is if you can avoid it, it's, it's smart to do. We're talking with Paul Mace, CEO of Omaha-based Schooler. And Paul, other than talent recruitment, the other big global business issue lately has been supply chain. And your company is part of the supply chain. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what what supply chain issues mean to you and and your leadership team at Schooler these days. Yeah, so, you know, the big part of our company is agricultural products and the the way we transport it's rail truck and container uh, the the rail uh, perf- the performance of railroads is really challenged and to kind of give you a backdrop uh, they're testifying with the surface transportation board today uh, because of their execution challenges and the underlying reason is labor mm-hmm. yeah you know, they they they're struggling to get labor to to uh, operate their business and execute their business and we feel that. Uh, same with the trucking industry. There's a shortage of drivers. That's kind of well known and pretty, you know, in the media a fair amount. Um, and so, our teams have, yeah, really had to stay focused on how can we get our ex- our, our business executed with the backdrop of uh, execution challenges on rail, on truck, and then containers, which a lot of consumers, you know, they're waiting on their new refrigerator, furniture, those things that, that uh, a lot of times are manu- manufactured overseas and, and brought into the U.S. School, schooler plays a role in shipping containers, those containers back to demand with agricultural products. And uh, the the shortage or the challenge of getting our hands on containers, very evident as we went through the last year. There's some signs of some moderation, uh, but it's been a, a very disruptive time here over the last, uh, I'll call it 18 months. But in, in the past, hasn't there been a glutton and an excess of containers coming from, from Asia and different places where to the point where people are building coffee shops and, and cities out of containers. But you're saying there's a shortage now? Yeah, the, the global shipping industry pre-COVID is pretty depressed. Uh, they, they struggled. There were some bankruptcies, uh, consolidation that took place. As COVID hit and all that disruption happened, a, a huge amount of new consumer demand. You know, folks weren't spending, you know, they, they started spending their money differently when everything was shut down. The home office, all those equipment they need. Every, you know, treadmill, you name it. I mean, all the things that you would read about, uh, very real. And the system just couldn't handle it. So you, uh, LA Long Beach, one of the busiest, largest ports in the U.S., had 140 ships waiting to get unloaded. Right now, we've we've worked uh, um, through that. I think there's around 20 ships today. Oh my God! So so it is somewhat better, uh, but very disruptive be- because of the shock to the system. I'll call it, and um, and so shipping rates. Just this will be kind of a, an antidote. Pre COVID, it was around two thousand dollars to go from Asia to the U S. Uh, during the height of the pandemic, there was. Uh, Rates that traded as high as fifty thousand. I'd say the going rate is twenty thousand, but today it's around eight thousand. So you could say it has moderated, but it's still four times higher than it was prior to the pandemic. That's it's still crazy. a crisis, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that drives inflation. You know, inflation is such a, a a big deal, but you know those transportation costs get passed on to the consumer. Well, with that, Paul, we're we're out of time, but we're going to have to have you back someday because there are other things we would like to talk to you about. But uh, we appreciate you so much taking the time to uh, introduce Schooler to our listeners and share about uh, things about where your company's going. Really appreciate you having on, and I'll I'll come on anytime. Just let me know. All right. Well, it's our pleasure. That's Paul Mace, CEO of Schooler, based here in Omaha, operating around the world. So we're going to take our final break of the hour, and when we come back, it'll be time for the Turner Construction Lightning Round. Quite a few things on the docket, so don't miss any of that. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by DNM Roofing and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Yes, well done, sir. Good, good. Yeah. Right. We didn't get to the Ukraine. Uh, no, that's all right. Yeah, we did yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but no, that's great. But you guys can you guys can use it any way you want. You can link it. You can whatever. Yeah, so that is. it's an open market. You know, so on, on the containers as far as yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, so we'll, uh, uh, you know, 
What are the big companies like that? O&E, that's, that's, it looks like one, uh, O-N-E, yeah. but O-N-E's a big one for us. We sh uh, Is there one that inland or something? Mitsubishi, uh, even Hyundai. Yeah. Um, but there, yeah, there were, there's all this consolidation happens. And then this hits, the, these global shipping companies, they, they were making more money in a quarter than they had made two decades combined. <laughs> of just, so they're just raving people. Well, it's just the market just exploded. How much of that was their their cost? I mean, were, were they taking advantage of? Well, like, but, but it's truly a market. So you can kind yeah. of go, oh my God, they're raping. But it's like, we're, I'm going, hey, I need this move. Well, it's going to cost. Uh, and somebody else is willing to pay twenty thousand. But, but I go and I'll pay twenty five. I need to move this. But, but that, but you're, so it's a true market. You can only pay so much for grain. I mean, right. And so it. So you're. That's your calculation. So, but, like, but okay, it, what if, can if I get this if, if, if a bunch of Rolexes, you know, can fit in a container, they could pay a fifty thousand dollars. Versus can you pay fifty thousand dollars for grain? Well, well so what was happening? Although, yeah, they corn, right? That's so what was happening was. was because it elevated so much, the, the shipping companies are like, screw the, the backhaul rate. Like the egg products going back is a yeah. cheap rate and considered a backhaul rate. But it's just added revenue because the ship's going back. No so it was good. a lot of things were going back empty. So the, during this, when it, when, it, when the rates go to the levels they've gone, they're like, I don't care. The, the more oh. turns I can make at twenty thousand. Oh, so, so so you got you bet you so we couldn't get them. Like we we were we are. So, uh, it, it, but it went down because of that. So, so you, you you paid less to, to ship your grain. We, we do today than the, than those other rates. So yeah, can you want to stick around or you? Yeah. Oh, I could take. Well, I could take off unless you need about five minutes. No, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Magid sitting in the studio. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and d &M Roofing. And it is time now for the lightning round, which is brought to you by Turner Construction. Turner Construction is building for the future. And in fact, if you go by 78th and Dodge right now in the Beverly Hills Plaza, you'll notice the end cap bay is being renovated. Jerry Ryan used to be there before they moved uh, a few bays to the west a while back, and that is going to be a Chase Bank branch. And if you go by there, you see Turner Construction all over the place. They're doing that uh, build out for that Chase Bank branch, and then they do big projects too. In fact, my father in law is in town and Last night, we were driving somewhere, and I said, oh, hey, do you want to go see all these data centers that we have under construction? And so I took them down to Highway 50, and uh, we drove by the massive Sarpy County uh, data center that, that Turner is uh, working on. They're the general contractor for that project. And he, like everyone else I've shown that project to, was just blown away by the scope and the magnitude. So cool stuff, and we appreciate Turner Construction bringing you the lightning round here each and every week. So, first up on the docket, uh, we have Cops Pizza, the old location, the original location on 72nd Street near Nebraska Furniture Mart has closed. And um, instead, Cops has opened up a new West location in a former Applebee's store at 180th and Center. That's now open, and the menu That's has fast. expanded. I beg your pardon? It's pretty fast. Yeah, they, they got that going pretty quickly, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, the menu has expanded, and uh, they're, uh, they're serving a lot more there than they just used to. And then um, next up, Pepper Jack's. 144th and Interstate 80 is under construction. That must be right next to where uh, I sold that land for that Scooters. Yeah, there's a Scooters right there. It's the, the same piece of land, and, and we split it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So it's coming along. It's it's got the walls up. It's going to be one of those new freestanding drive-through Pepper Jacks locations. And I understand there might be another Pepper Jacks going up on 204th. Uh, somewhere up, like maybe north of Maple or yeah, something. Yeah, we need like more Pepper Jack. <laughs> pepper, Pepper, Pepper Jack Grill. And then last week we reported on one in Gretna that was under construction. So High V has a relatively new concept called Dollar Fresh Market, and this concept had been centered on small towns primarily. But uh, yesterday the High V drugstore in Florence, suburban Florence, North Omaha, has uh, converted to one of these. Dollar Fresh stores, eighteen thousand feet. They tend to focus more on value, and, and it's more of a price play. 
Uh, and this is the first Hy-Vee Dollar Fresh store to exist anywhere in a metropolitan area. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they decide to do more of those in larger cities, depending on how this one in the Florence neighborhood goes. So, what else? Red Anchor Seafood is planning a soft grand opening at Metro Crossing and Council Bluffs, going into a former barbecue restaurant. It is Cajun inspired cuisine. Yeah. The soft grand opening July 21st. Trenton, I think you and I need to head over there. When you look at. I think we need an invitation if you're listening out there. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But if you look at the picture of it, they've got little uh, statues of crabs and lobster on the outside. So it's got to be good. I still got to get over to the uh, inner rail and, and go to Reagan Seafood. Yes, and uh, you're yeah, taking me rolls. with you. Totally. I mean, that's what you promised yep. on the show last week. So we need to buying. go over. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I should go by myself then. All right, uh, Sickies Garage and Brew Burgers. That was a focus group that came up with that name. Sickies. I yeah. wonder if it's some guy's last name. Um. It is. Sickies. Okay. Well, they are going into the former Joe's Crab Shack building at the West Roads. Renovations are in full force. If you've been by there lately, they're they're changing it like crazy. And they're actively hiring. So, Sickies Garage and... No, it's called Sickies Garage Burgers and Brews. That's the actual name. And they are actively hiring right now. This is a place out of Fargo, North Dakota. They do have a location in Bellevue. It's on Cornhusker Road, a little bit east yep. of the Kennedy. And then they have locations, oh, South Dakota and a couple other random states here and there. So they're really growing and, and getting quite a bit bigger. I really like uh, Upset Stomach Cafe. Delicious. <laughs> the irritable irritable bowel syndrome cafe. Yeah. No, they're not called that. They're just called Sickies. But even though it's called Sickies, it's it's from what I hear, a pretty good place. And the Baking Flamingos is opening near 168th and Harrison, a home based bakery business getting into a bricks and mortar spot. And with that, the music is playing, so we must leave you for one whole week. Appreciate you being with us. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, DNM Roofing, and Turner Construction. We'll chat with you again next week at 9 o'clock right here on Nebraska's Superstation 1110 KFAB. Was that, was that a little boisterous? Yeah, it was a little boisterous. Trenton Maggot. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.